Are gerbils bad pets? Well, that depends on how you feel about the pros and cons of keeping them. The most obvious pro being just how cute they are. I mean, look at that face. And that one. How can you not fall in love with them? And as well as being extremely cute, they're also very clean. As a desert species, they're adapted to survive in areas with very little water, which means their bodies have evolved to conserve as much water as possible, resulting in very small amounts of urine, making their bedding last longer than some other pet rodents before it starts to smell. Gerbils are also often naturally toilet trained by simply providing a sand bath. Not all gerbils respond as well to this though, and even mostly toilet trained gerbils will still occasionally use other areas as their bathroom. The small peas and good toilet habits also contribute to the general lack of bad smells from gerbils. If their sand bath is cleaned regularly and they have plenty of bedding, there's virtually no smell that comes from a gerbil enclosure, other than the smell of whatever bedding you're using. And if you're using a suitable tank, this should contain most of their bedding. Although, with the amount they kick it around everywhere, you may still have some spillage. Compared to some other small rodents, gerbils have a longer average lifespan. The oldest gerbil recorded lived to a very respectable 8 years and 4 months according to Guinness World Records. Although this definitely isn't common. Their lifespan is usually in the range of 3-4 to four years, compared to the 2-3 to three years of hamsters and rats, or 1-2 to two years of mice. Another benefit of gerbils is that although they can be shy to begin with, they're usually very friendly and unlikely to bite. Although they may test your fingers to see if they're food. They're also polyphasic sleepers, meaning instead of one long sleep, they take lots of short naps throughout the day and night, which gives you lots of opportunities to see and spend time with them. But they don't necessarily need human interaction. They're not yet fully domesticated, so don't gain a huge amount from interacting with people. So if you're unable to hang out with them for a few days, they'll be totally fine, as long as they've got food, water, and plenty of enrichment. Another benefit, if you're not keen on noise, is how whisper quiet they are most of the time. Most sounds that gerbils make are outside of our auditory range, with vocalizations ranging from 5 to 50 kilohertz and our mere human ears only able to hear well in the 2 to 4 kilohertz range. This means it's very rare for us to hear any of the sounds they make. But you may hear some rustling and chewing as they go about their days. Their daily care requirements are also fairly minimal. There isn't much care that they need every day. Even if you have a busy schedule or chronic health problems like I do, the daily care is very manageable, even on bad days. And the ongoing cost of care can be relatively low, excluding vet bills. As their bedding doesn't need changing that often, if you buy in bulk, it can last a while. And their favorite toys are usually cardboard tubes and things like egg boxes. So as well as being low cost to entertain, they're also excellent recyclers. But there's also downsides to keeping gerbils, one of which being that vet treatment is often very expensive, unfortunately. Even a basic appointment at my local exotic vet is £44, and then if more testing, medication or treatments are needed, this can up the cost even more. For the worst case scenario, you could be looking at hundreds, possibly even more, for things like surgery. Although gerbils do have a relatively low incidence of health problems, so not every gerbil will need vet treatment during their lifetimes, but it's worth bearing in mind. And although gerbils are cheap to maintain, they can cost a lot of money to set up properly. Their enclosure is probably the biggest expense. Although pet stores can and do sell small, cheap enclosures, these aren't suitable as permanent homes. And in most countries, there aren't suitable enclosures that are sold in stores or online at all. So in order to get a decent sized enclosure, most people have to resort to DIY options. But on top of the enclosure, there's a whole shopping list of things that we need to have before getting the gerbils themselves. And the cost of all these things can very quickly add up. And all of these things can take up a fair amount of space in your home as well. The ideal floor space for gerbils is 0.5 meters squared, and they can easily use even more room if you use a playpen. Although they don't need access to it all the time, it's just a nice addition. As a species, they tend to spend the majority of their time inside the burrows just dinging, chewing and rearranging things. So you may not see them out and about for long periods of time, but they may enjoy brief outings. They also have a massive chewing need. I like to say that while rodents may chew, gerbils destroy. Anything and everything in their vicinity is fair game for chewing. So they'll need constant access to things like wood, hay, plain paper and cardboard to fulfill their giant chewing need. But I personally find it really relaxing hearing their chewing sounds. It's definitely one of my favorite things. But one of the biggest downsides, I think, is their sensitive social structure. They are social animals and so can't live alone, 
but they're not completely social like rats. They're much more selective, and fallouts can happen fairly often. Although some places may suggest that gerbils can live in groups, living in anything more than pairs increases the risk of fights happening, with larger groups almost guaranteed to fall out at some point. And if they do fall out, they may not rebond. And finding a new friend can be difficult, as gerbils generally don't like making new friends. And it's very dangerous to just put two gerbils together in a tank, as gerbil fights can be fatal. There are methods, such as the split tank method, that can be used to try and improve the chance of them bonding, but this isn't guaranteed. As well as being a little wary of other gerbils, they can be the same way with people sometimes. And as a species, they generally don't like to sit still and get pets. There are some exceptions to this rule, but generally gerbils much prefer using people as climbing frames than sitting for a cuddle. They can also be a little shy, especially when you first bring them home. So spending time with them very much needs to be on their terms. You'll need to wait until they decide to venture out of their burrows to hang out with them and train them, but if you use the right methods, gerbils can learn to not only come out more when people are around, but they can also learn to come up when you call them. the seed. If you want to know more about these methods, check out this video where I walk you through the process of building trust and hand taming a new gerbil. And I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. <laughs>